A special case of systems are um, conservative systems, and this term really comes about from physics. And so I want to start with just a little bit of a physics perspective uh, to kind of give us a background for the lecture. And so um, in the physics perspective, the x variable is going to be our position, and the y variable is going to be the velocity of some particle or some mass. And so our phase portrait is going to be telling us about the position and velocity of an object over time. So here's an example of that, a pretty classic example. We have a spring, and it's a mass m, and it's at the end of, it's a linear spring, um, and it has some displacement distance, and so its position is x, and its velocity is x dot, which we're calling y, and a fact about this spring is there's no friction in the system, and so energy is conserved, and the energy of the spring is its kinetic energy, which is 1 half mv squared, which uh, for us will be 1 half my squared, because y is the velocity, uh, plus its potential energy, and the potential energy of a spring is just 1 half k x squared. That's um, a fact that people usually learn um, if they've taken a physics class. And so our total energy is 1 half uh, my squared plus 1 half k x squared, and um, our total energy is going to be constant uh, for this system. So to the way we start the spring going is we pull it out to some displacement x, and then we let it go, and it's going to bob back and forth. And because there's no friction, it bobs back and forth forever. And what I'm showing you is what the x variable is doing, which is the position. But while the x variable is doing this, when we're out here, the x variable is quite positive, and the y variable is um, negative, because uh, we're about to start moving in this direction. And so actually, at every moment, as we bop back and forth, there's an associated velocity. And that's graphed here. Here we are. Uh, our position is going back and forth. And our velocity is negative, and then positive, negative, and then positive. And um, we're just going in an endless loop. Uh, so the spring's going back and forth. And in the phase space, we're tracing out this circle while that happens. Um, and if I had started the spring at a uh, at l with less potential energy, we would be going on a smaller uh, loop. Our velocities wouldn't get as big and our positions don't get as big. And the, the curve is defined by this constant energy surface. So this is actually the equation of an ellipse. And we know that the position and the velocity need to always satisfy this equation so if I give you an initial condition, you can draw the ellipse that they have to live on, and I know that the trajectory will be a perfect closed ellipse. And so this conserved quantity ends up resulting in trajectories that genuinely are closed orbits. And that is a really common feature of systems with a conserved quantity, uh, that we uh, are much more likely to see a closed orbit in that kind of system um, th than a system without a conserved quantity. So I didn't get that phase portrait using the equations of motion. I got that phase portrait just saying, hey, I happen to know this extra fact about this system. The energy is always going to be constant. But it's actually possible to use the energy information to get equations of motion. And so I want to go ahead and show that. Um, so Newton's law says that f is equal to mass times acceleration. And acceleration is a second derivative of our position. Um, in a system where energy is conserved, we can actually use a potential energy to figure out what the force is that um, our object is experiencing. And it's given by this expression. The force is equal to um, the derivative of the potential energy with respect to position. And so that translates into mx double dot is equal to the negative of the derivative of the potential energy with respect to position. And for our spring, the potential energy was 1 half kx squared. And so we have the equation of motion, uh, mx double dot equals negative kx. Um, and OK, this is a, a second order equation, and we can turn it into a first order system. So we set x dot to be y. Y is uh, our velocity, uh, and it sort of acts as a dummy variable as we split this into, into two first order equations. And then um, y dot, I can pull the m over. And so y dot is equal to negative kx over m. And so 
these are the, uh, this is the differential, this is the dynamical system associated with this potential energy function. And so now we have a picture of our spring, which is, here's the equations of motion, and there's very obviously a fixed point at zero, zero, and um, this is already linear, and so here's the matrix associated with this pair of equations, and um, it's zero, one, negative k over m, zero. The trace of this matrix is zero. Um, the determinant of this matrix is positive k over m, um, and so uh, we have a linear center. Uh, that's, that's the type of fixed point that it is. Um, and because there were no nonlinear terms, we know that it just literally is a center. Um, so this information ultimately gives us a relatively, like it gives us the same sort of phase portrait as we got from knowing about the energy. Um, okay, I'm attempting to draw a center here, centered <clears throat> at zero, zero. But uh, knowing about the energy is a really direct way of just immediately solving for these curves and knowing that they're gonna be closed curves. And so if we were able to look at this pair, uh, at this system, and see that it had an associated conserved quantity, then we would immediately know that we expected these closed orbits. Um, and so that's gonna be the story for conservative systems. It's gonna be a set of systems where we look at these differential equations and we attempt to identify a quantity that acts like just like a total energy does in this particular system.